We met with one of the world's highest Mythic Plus players to learn how to excel as a ranged DPS in Keys. Together, we watched a low-level freehold run and analyzed the common mistakes you might be making regularly. No matter your skill level, there's something valuable to learn here. So sit back, relax, and grab your notepad as we discover how to improve our skills as ranged players in Mythic Plus. To kick things off, let's start with a mistake that is causing countless players to miss out on huge amounts of damage every day. When you enter a key, you've got a few things you need to make sure of. Food buff? Check. Weapon oil? Check. File? Check. Augment rune? Check. And we're ready to go blast through this key. Whoa, not so fast, buddy. You just missed out on the biggest check of them all. Using your cooldowns just before the key is put in. Yeah, you heard that right. If you activate your 3 minute offensive cooldown incarnation in this case, just before the pull timer hits zero, you actually get an entire use of it for absolutely free. Here we see Shelly doing just that with Tip the Scales, which has its cooldown reset once the dungeon starts. This is something the pros always make sure they do because it makes that first pull just that much easier and can help them plan their cooldowns better throughout the run. You might notice there's also a turnip in the background. Which brings us to another issue with our Boomkin friend. They are not pre-farming their procs, once again causing their damage to suffer. By using a toy like the turnip punching bag, you can generate stacks of various damage procs, such as the Arcanic Pulsar for Boomkins, or as Ricky PP is showing, the tier set for Shadow Priest. Finally, our Boomkin is making yet another damage mistake that is causing them to miss out on tons of damage, not pre-potioning before the key is put in. This can be done with any position, as seen here by Shelly, who uses his invisibility potion to allow their group to skip the first pack and still have their potion off cooldown for later. Next up, let's cover defensive usage. As a ranged DPS, you have a much easier time avoiding damage than melee characters. This is because you can see incoming casts more clearly and rarely have to worry about things like frontals and ground effects. Unlike melee, you only need to be concerned about area of effect damage, targeted casts, and fixates, making it much easier to preemptively avoid damage since everything that can harm you is easily telegraphed. A good example of this is the Freehold Enforcer's Shattering Bellow which, although it has a clear cast time, is a mechanic that our Boomkin did not react to. Thankfully, no one died, but the situation was extremely challenging for the healer, resulting in the tank almost dropping as well. If the difficulty level of this key were any higher, there would definitely have been some deaths here. Now, why did this happen? The answer is simple. Everyone in the group did not use their defensives before the damage had taken place, causing them to take the full effect of Shattering Bellow. Due to our Boomkin's clear vision of the fight, they should have been able to pre-bark skin this as they can clearly see the mechanic coming and don't have to worry about any of the melee mechanics. Now let's look at Shelly for comparison, whose team does a huge first pull. Shelly is aware of the dangers of the abilities in the dungeon and the strain it can put on the healer when defensives are used poorly. Knowing this, he makes sure he activates his obsidian scales just before the shattering bellow comes in, perfectly optimizing the timing on his wall for any other incoming damage. Now, this is a very high key, so he still drops to 36%, but you can imagine that if he didn't do this, he would have been proccing that cheat death in their first pull. Even though Shelly knew he was going to drop low here, it's important to note that he did not overlap any of his other defensives, allowing him to always pre-use something for future pulls. Now, let's ask you a question. How many runs have you been in where you've tried your best, but you've missed timing the key by just a few seconds? If you're in this boat, part of the problem may be related to your movement speed increases. This is a very common problem. In this clip, you can see our Boomkin walking to the next pack and then using Stampeding Roar, which only connects to themselves as they trail behind their group, resulting in the entire group being slower than they should be, causing them to lose out on damage. On the other hand, we have Shelly, whose druid is using Stampeding Roar on the entire team to allow them to move swiftly in stealth. Ricky PP using a shield for the movement speed, and to top it off, we have Shelly rescuing the furthest away player into the fight. By utilizing movement speed chains and having every player look out for one another, they have saved precious seconds between pulls, giving them a better chance of timing the key. Dampeding Roar alone will net your party 4 seconds of time saved per use, so you can imagine how much time Shelly's team is saving by optimizing their movement speed as a team. For this next point, we're going to be evaluating something that's often overlooked, nameplates. As you can see here, the pack our Boomkin is facing can be tough. It needs good crowd control, interrupts, and focus fire on the bilge rat brine scales to prevent as much damage as possible. 
However, due to their UI, they are unable to see these casts as their nameplates are all overlapping, which can cause missed interrupts and targeting the wrong enemy, as it's simply too difficult to find their ideal target in the mayhem of their UI. As a melee, this isn't always a problem, as it's a little easier to quickly tab between targets, but as a caster, you have to rely on nameplates, which won't be a problem once you've set them up correctly. To do so, you want to enable stacking nameplates like the majority of high rated ranged in M+, which gives you a much more clear display of the fight. As you can see here, they can easily view every mob in the pack and all of their casts, allowing them to have all the information they need for correct targeting, crowd control, and interrupts. To change this, simply open your interface, type in nameplate, and switch from overlapping to stacking on the nameplate motion type setting. Moving on, have you ever been in a situation where your tank pulls a large group of mobs, you start applying your dots, and then the mobs are nearly dead before you can even finish? This is a common problem for many ranged DPS, but it's one that can easily be avoided. If you've reached the point where you're trailing behind your group, desperately trying to keep up, it probably stems from you being too hesitant to move into melee range during and after the pull. This causes significant issues as you're always wasting time on movement to connect to the pack after it has already been engaged. While your team is already fighting, you're desperately waddling with your little ranged DPS legs. Instead, what you should be doing is something called pre-positioning. This is the act of moving to where the next pack is going to be stacked as the current pack is dying. This is hugely beneficial as it allows you to start dealing damage as fast as possible by minimizing any time wasted on traveling and allows you to ramp up on multiple targets before they drop too low. Now, when you're in a pug, this may seem daunting as you don't really know how the tank is going to set the pull. However, you can still take initiative and place yourself close to the tank as they are pulling so you can start ramping as soon as they are ready. Next up, we've got mechanics, one of the most common causes of wipes in Mythic Plus. Just think, how many times have your teammates messed up a mechanic that caused you to die? This happens all the time because range players often try to stay far away even when it's not necessary, creating a wall of mechanics for everyone in between for no reason. This happens to our Boomkin who's fighting a pack with an Iron Tide Oarsman, the owner of the notorious Pug Stomper ability, Sea Spout. Unfortunately, our Boomkin is standing far away, resulting in the corridor they're on being filled with Sea Spout, leaving them very little room to dodge. Fortunately, this time everyone was able to evade the attack, but usually this sort of poor positioning will result in some death. Stacking in melee is a very common solution in many dungeons, as it makes it very easy for your party to deal with mechanics. For example, by mass dispelling against Watcher Iridius on his power overload ability. This is not to say that you should always stand in melee as a ranged DPS, as having distance also has its perks in certain scenarios. When you have distance from the group, it allows you to avoid fixates a lot easier. The extended travel time that the mob has to spend running to you allows your group more leeway with their interrupts and results in you not having to kite it, meaning you do more damage. However, it is important that you are playing according to the dungeon with your positioning, rather than playing with the mindset that you need to position far away just because you can. Being at range can also allow you to bait mechanics away, such as the Rancid Maw ability from Naraxxus. Just make sure that you're not close to other ranged as you don't want to compromise their positioning by spawning mechanics onto their heads. Finally, being further away also has the added benefit of the potential to outrange casts, such as the Shattering Bellow from the Enforcer in Freehold, meaning you can hold onto your defensives for mistakes or unavoidable mechanics. So when it comes to positioning, make sure you know exactly what the mob's mechanics are to prevent standing far away and inting your entire group when you should have just been stacking. Better positioning will also help with our next common problem, mob control. Thousands of keys are depleted weekly due to poor kicks and crowd control, which could easily be avoided, just like this wipe in our Boomkins group. Now, much like any other ranged class, our Boomkin had the tools to deal with this pack, namely Typhoon and Incapacitating Roar. However, they were both too far away and too focused on damage to support the group with their crowd control. This is a really common mistake, where casters are often just too far away to be able to utilize CC as an interrupt. Instead, as we mentioned earlier, where positioning close to the pack helps bait mechanics, it's also imperative for allowing ranged players to quickly prevent mob casts without having to waste time on movement, and can also increase damage for classes like Fire Mage, who can build Hot Streak simply from Dragon's Breathing. When a pack requires multiple crowd controls, all the ranged players should be close enough to help out. In this clip, you can see Shelly's team doing exactly that, with the mage playing close to the tank, ready to Dragon's Breath at a moment's notice, and Shelly himself being close enough to use his Dragon Racials without having to waste any globals running in. The timing of crowd control and kicks is also important. For example, we see here the fixated Scrapper gets crowd controlled too late, 
resulting in the Holy Paladin having to desperately run for his life. If the Paladin were to get gripped by the Harpooner at this point, he may have died due to the painstakingly slow interrupt. Of course, when a pro encounters this mob, the crowd control comes as soon as possible, allowing their teammate to go back to performing their role instantly with no risk of dying. Moving on, do you find yourself dealing less damage than you're supposed to, but have absolutely no idea why? Well, you might just be over capping on resources. In this clip, you can see our Boomkin casting a full moon when they are close to reaching their astral cap, wasting significant damage. Now they have fewer finishers available and need to spend more time regaining astral power that they could have just gotten by using full moon without being close to their cap. This can be applied to almost every ranged class, whether it's casting incinerates with full soul shards as a warlock, not spending your insanity as a shadow priest, or hoarding too many fire blast stacks as a fire mage. These mistakes can cause you to lose a ton of potential throughput. Now, there might be times where you need to pool your secondary resource, like when needing to blast through a pressure point on a boss or go hard on a big trash pull. Overcapping once or twice might not impact your DPS too much, but overcapping multiple times across an entire run can result in a huge amount of lost damage. Next, we've got something that truly impacts your damage, cooldown usage. Consider how many times you've come across a huge pack, but just don't have your biggest offensive cooldowns ready. If this is something that happens to you, you're probably missing out on a significant aspect of Mythic Plus. Planning your cooldowns is crucial. This is something our Boomkin does well here, as you can see them holding on to Incarnation during this pack. Although many players would just send it and forget it, the Boomkin knows there's going to be a big pack coming up and holds on to their incarnation to get much more value from it. Even though they delayed their CD for a minute, they end up getting more power from the cooldown because there are more mobs and also more dangerous enemies in the pack that need to be taken care of quickly. Now, our Boomkin's decision wasn't random luck. It came from their experience of running multiple instances of the same dungeon and analyzing the route chosen by their tank. This enables them to plan their cooldowns effectively for each pack. So next time when you step into a Mythic Plus and get handed the tank's preferred route, take a close look and think about how you can make the most of your cooldowns. You'll soon see a noticeable boost in your damage output for the whole run. Next up, we have a significant problem that plagues many ranged DPS players, causing them to lose out on hundreds of casts per dungeon. They fail to see their global cooldowns while moving. Whether you're transitioning between packs, targeted by a fixate, or simply dodging a mechanic, Mastering the art of dealing damage while on the move is a crucial aspect of playing ranged DPS. So crucial, in fact, that it even has its own name, stutter stepping. This is a technique where you move short distances between your casts, allowing you to continue casting while covering ground. To pull this off, simply move a step right at the end of each cast. This exploits latency, allowing you to take a step without missing out on damage. You won't cover much ground, but if you're just trying to shimmy your way to the next pack, it can get the job done. Alternatively, you can use instant casts to move, allowing you to cover ground while you're still on the global cooldown. Regardless of how you choose to keep dealing damage, it's important to understand that as a caster, every global cooldown spent doing nothing is a global where you're essentially as useful as someone who's disconnected, as you don't even have a melee swing to cover your lack of globals. Well, unless you're a hunter. This makes it incredibly important that when you move, you're casting an ability at all times, whether it's through stutter stepping to cover a short distance, or using instant cast abilities for longer movements. Even if the instant you're using it isn't optimal for your rotation, it's always better than doing nothing. Alternatively, if you're playing a class with abilities that allow you to maintain your rotation while moving, such as an Evoker's Hover or a Mage's Ice Flows, it's important to save these cooldowns rather than relying on instant cast abilities as it allows you to continue your regular rotation. If you aim to achieve maximum DPS, learning to cover your movement with instant cast abilities, mastering stutter stepping, or saving mobility cooldowns is vital as there's just so much movement in Mythic Plus. Our final point is all about interrupts, and if you're ever not sure how to use yours, be sure to pay attention. In Mythic Plus, ranged interrupts are seen as invaluable. Their larger cooldown and ability to interrupt mobs from a greater distance mean we reserve our interrupt for higher priority abilities and less frequent casts. Ranged interrupts also generally have a longer duration than melee interrupts, so utilizing that interrupt for high priority mobs will lock them out for a longer period, making it easier for your healer. Ranged interrupts being longer than melee isn't just good defensively though, it can also help us increase our damage. This may seem far-fetched, but by utilizing our kick on further away casters, we can force them to auto-walk into melee, just like the Stone Vault Geomancer in Uldaman. By interrupting them on either Stone Spike or Chain Lightning, we can drag them in, allowing us to dot and AoE them down with the rest of the pack. 
All right, everyone, that rounds off this video on how to play ranged DPS in Mythic Plus. What would you like us to cover next? Do you have any specific issues you keep running into? Let us know in the comments below, and we might just use your idea. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.